seems that when you're in the midst of a little bit of pain and anguish, the tide is able to keep right on doing what you do. Amen. Let's show for miracles. Amen. But like I said, you can get healthy, not stay before for as long, amen. I'm ready to eat like that. <laughs> amen. So you know what I'm going to say, amen. But the good thing about you is that this can't take me out. Amen. I might still go down a little bit, amen. But that's all right. God is able. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. Amen. Pastor <clears throat> Scroll has pretty much already read you the word on today. Amen. Let us just stand again for another reading. Amen. I ain't going to detail because she pretty much touched everything. I just want a couple of questions to ask you. Amen. I want you to ask yourself on today. Amen. And I'm going to ask you to be reading out of the message. She's with King James Road, let me read a message again to help clarify. Amen. The reason is this. Living creatively, friends. That means we can't always do things the same way. That's right. Amen. I mean, you have to be careful, amen, with saying this is how I always done it. This is how I always do it. You got to be creative in your living. Amen. A little creative friends, if someone falls into sin, forget it and destroy him. Save your critical comments for yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't nobody need all those critical comments. Amen. Because as you call yourself, put them up and push them back. Amen. So be careful in your speech. Amen. How you approach someone. You might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. Because okay. as soon as you say something, you're going to know what God is going to forgive you before they go to sleep. Amen. 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 A lot of times you forget that you ain't even finished living yet. Yeah. Amen. So when you approach someone, be careful because you don't know what's going to come in your path and you're not going to be strong enough because you just didn't bring me praying up that day. Amen. You might even need forgiveness before the day is out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share that burden and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too big for that, no you are bad in the sea. What? Amen. You're too big to reach down. That's what I love about Jesus, because you know what? Jesus, Jesus did not mind to meet you when he was there. No way. Amen. He went in and the barn and all under this stuff. Amen. He, wherever you were at, he was able to reach you there to pull you out. Yeah. And that's a whole lot about being able to live and being able to share with them. If you can't reach you when they're here, they ain't coming with you. That's right. You can't holler out and come on over here. So number four, it says, make a capital, number four, number four, four, make a capital exploration of who you are. Yes. Before you go try to help somebody else, explore who you are. Okay. Yeah, amen. Examine yourself. <laughs> amen. And work for what you have been given and the work you have been given. So make a capital exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. You did all the work you were supposed to do. Okay. And you did everything God required and asked of you. Yes. Before you start trying to even and be critical about others. Uh -oh. Yourself in the day. Before you go, make sure you see yourself in there. Everything God has called you to do so that you shall be famous. Uh -oh. So that you shall be able to go in with confidence and say, you know what, God has called me to help you. Amen. So don't be impressed with yourself. Uh -huh. Don't need to be here. All right. Amen. A lot of us impress with ourselves because our intellect, our mind, and the things that we know or who we know. He said, don't need, don't need to be twisted. Don't need to be impressed with yourself. You ain't all that. So don't compare yourself with others. And a lot of times, we can work too way. We get impressed by ourselves because we see how bad somebody else is doing. So we like, we got to be up because we ain't doing like that. We're not that bad. But he said, don't compare yourself with others. Whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, you are who you are. You are who God made you. Amen. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Amen. God wanted me to talk to you today about a topic, amen. And experience real joy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Maybe see it again. Get real and experience real joy. Amen. Because <clears throat> a lot of times the joy to be experienced is just a facade. Amen. Something to just keep us going. So there's two questions that God wants us to ponder on today. Amen. But before I get into that, I heard uh, Pastor Spurl actually define meekness for the kids. Amen. Let me expand a little bit further. Amen. Meekness is humbly patient. So when you go to someone in meekness, you humbly go to them in patience, realizing that they might not get together when you talk to them. They might not be ready to say, okay, I really need that. They might not be ready to admit, okay, I need help. So when you go to someone, 
someone in need and then he's coming in patient, don't try to arrest them and there's something they live. Okay, that's good, that's good. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be humble and patient when you approach someone even when you want to be Amen. Because God is patient with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one of my favorite things here, amen, you always talk about through the spirit, amen, and that one that says long suffering. That's right. Amen. A lot of times you get it all back with it. Yeah, I waited on them, but long suffering means without complaining. Right. When you know you've been long suffering, amen, not only you waiting and humbly and patient, that means you ain't complaining about it. Yeah. So I don't need to do it about three times, I don't talk to them, I don't spend an hour on the telephone, and they still doing that mess. You complaining. So long summer means without complaining. Otherwise, that's this not one of the attributes of the fruit you really experience and amen. And then compassion is a feeling of deep sympathy accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the suffering. So when you're compassionate about someone, not only do you have sympathy, deep sympathy, but you got a desire to help them alleviate the suffering that they're going through. Yeah. That's what true compassion is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. You want to see them get out of what they need. That's right. That's good. So you're willing to humbly and patiently wait till they can see, amen, the type that you said you know. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is very common for man, amen, to look upon himself as wiser mm -hmm. and better than other men. Because we all need to know a little something. <laughs> Sometimes they look, we feel we know something. <laughs> you know? And, and because of that, amen, sometimes we approach folks, we approach them like we know something. Right. But again, you gotta approach them with the knowing that it ain't you, but it's the Christ in you yeah. that might can pull somebody out. Right. But then if you just do your own intellect, it ain't gonna work. That's the truth, yeah. Amen. So we gotta be careful again. So one who actually thinks of himself better than being deceives himself. And that's what he's talking about. By pretending you use it again. Oh, no, nah, we we'll understand like, oh, yeah, I got this. No, you don't. Because mm -hmm. without God, you can mess it all up. No, it is. Amen. That's right. And going down to the verse 4 to talk about the better you know your own hearts. Mm -hmm. The better we know our own hearts and our own ways, the better we are, amen, to, to just despise others and what they do. Mm -hmm. Once you recognize who you are, know your heart, know your ways, you are less likely to look at someone in a negative fashion because you know that you don't always live. You don't always have to together. Right. Amen. So the two questions that we got into the pot on today. The first one is, are you as God intended? <coughs> or are you struggling to live up to other people's expectations? Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's what it's simply going back to. Are you living as God intended for you to live? Mm. Or are you struggling to live up to somebody's expectations of what you're supposed to be doing? What are you supposed to be at? Who are you supposed to be hanging with? Who are you all supposed to be communicating with? What job you are you living as God expected you based on what he put in you? Or are you trying to meet other people's expectations of what they think about you? <laughs> You're trying to make them happy. No way, that's good. And it comes back to the little sermon, powerful with man or powerful with God. You make the choice. Amen. What do you want to do? Mm. The second question is, well, what happened if you just dropped your mask and got real? Mm. Mm. What would happen if you just got real to folks? <laughs> told them what was really on your head, not what you thought they wanted to hear, but told them how you really feel. Mm. Mm -mm. A lot of us didn't get to be like, oh, I didn't know you thought like that. <laughs> and they saw all of a sudden like, okay, I thought they knew Jesus, but apparently you don't hang with him. Okay, so we got to ask ourselves those questions, but God wants us to be real. Amen. 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 When people question your relationship with Christ, your sincerity, or your relationship with your significant other, your family and friends, when you got real with people close to you, they really know, say, I thought I knew him, but I don't really know him. Because I never would have guessed out. What happens if we get real? <laughs> this is the question. And this is what God wants you to see and to ask yourself. Am I being real with myself? Because if you don't be real with yourself, then you can't get real with God. You know you know who you really are anyway. Right. But it's all about humble submission. You can't present yourself to live a sacrifice, but you don't want to be killed. Mm. No way. That's and it's hard to do. <laughs> like I'm a God, use me anyway you want to use me. But just don't, just don't do that. Don't please don't sell my flesh. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. This is my work together. 
Okay, that brings me to this, amen. What was scored an amen about the Velveteen Rabbit? That has the time is never speaking to us, and I just want to share with you today, like I said, we're going to be all the amen. This is for which hopefully we'll get a little bit. But in the conversation between the new tour rabbit and an old skinny horse, Rabbit asked this question. What's real? I really want to know what is real. Does it mean having things that run inside you and they stick out handle? And because of course we know the horse has a stick out handle, we can ride and all that other stuff. And the horse looked at Rabbit and said, real isn't how you made. It's a thing that happens to you when a child really loves you. And then Rabbit said, okay, does it hurt? And Rabbit, and then the horse said, sometimes. And, but when you're real, you don't mind. Does it happen all at once, he asked? It doesn't, said the horse. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily, have sharp edges, or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you're real, most of your hair is lost, has been rolled off, your eyes dropped off, and you get loose in the joints and very flat. But these things don't matter because once you're real, you can't be ugly. Except to people who don't understand. That's the truth. So it's a lot of things that occur in trying to get real. And the rest is like, wow. Because you know that most rabbits or most push toys, mm -hmm. if they are really little, mm -hmm. you can tell it. Mm -hmm. You can see it. Mm -hmm. And if they get close to the field, they be like, ooh, ow, ooh, they hurt. But you know what? <laughs> they will always have someone holding them. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Being with them. Mm -hmm. So that's the process they have to go through in order to be identified as a little. Wow. It might be painful. They might lose some stuff. What? But they love it. That's no. real. They read it. That's real. And a lot of times in our life, you know, when you're fragile, you got rough edges, I mean, sharp, if you hardcore, you can't really be real. Mm -hmm. But then you can't take it and box around and, and tow it and, and all those things that require for someone to really appreciate and hold on to it. This will happen, they mean. And this is the same way you enjoy pain. Joy and pain. It's like sunshine and rain. Amen. I know it was a great day, boys. I mean, I mean, but uh, joy and pain are like sunshine and rain. And they are connected in the latter. And this is the main thing. The latter of both of those things make the former just so much better. Make it so much more appreciated. Without the pain, joy is insignificant. Without the rain, the sun can't really cause the flower in here to pull up yeah. and actually grow and be yeah. So in order for one to really be appreciated, the other has to happen. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Ain't no way around it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we gotta understand that. So you gotta get real and understand that everything ain't always gonna be a bad rules. Amen. 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 You have to experience the matter of accepting the the process, knowing that the form of the belt and the promises. So once you have experienced those things, you realize that I'm not concerned about the latter because I know the former has been promised. And when the former occurs, then it don't even matter. Just like the promise said, nothing else matters but seeking you need. Now once you get to that point where nothing else really matters, you don't care about being real. You don't care about somebody seeing that, okay, he ain't having it all together. I can kill that little thing I got all together. We and God got color. Right. We straight, we tight. All right. That's right. So we got to be real in order to get to that place where we can be used. Mm -hmm. In order to be used, you got to be real. Amen. So we can truly say that you're the Lord is my strength. Because if you can, the fact that you are involved in things, that then you don't like the thought issue, or you were mistreated, According to the appearance of things, that if people didn't like you, you weren't able to be in the clique. Mm -hmm. And then if you can really say that the joy of the Lord is your strength, amen, you got to hold on to the fact that your joy was not stolen. Amen. It was just momentarily murdered. Mm -hmm. But you got to have a relationship. You got to 
understand that to be, I understand the process. I understand that some of those things that I went through was just to make me really see. Just like those that he said, now I know you. Mm -hmm. I thought we were tired. So sometimes bad things occur and happen, but it's all a part of you being real. You gotta share your facade because so often we have to have the facade on us. Not only did it cause you to have yourself, but it caused your relationship with Christ to become even more real. When you hear your misfortunes, when you hear your things that really get you here, people talked about you, when people left you, when you thought you were gonna be a reason to help them. It caused you to step back and say, you know what, I need to assess my situation and understand that I can trust on God. Amen. I can believe in Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because King David said in Psalms 139, 13 through 14, the century version it says like this, you make my whole being in an amazing way. Everything that you did about me, you did it in an amazing way. I don't really, I got to sit back and realize like, man, I'm unique. There's no one like you. And me, and me, God has designed everything in your life for that purpose, amen. And to be to the best is simple like this. 13 and 14 says, oh yes, you shake me first inside. Then out. Mm -hmm. You form me in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. I thank you, high God. You are breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship and adore you. What is creation? Once you realize that you are an awesome creation of God, that He formed you on the inside first, and then He formed you on the outside. He formed you in your mother's womb, and everything that He did about you was wonderfully made. Amen. Once you understand who you are, and to relationship with what you're going through, it don't even matter. Because if God did something that great, He got to go. Amen. Amen. So we gotta understand that God will accept the Father, but people often have a hard time adjusting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the reality of it. God will accept it, but people will have a hard time adjusting. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, I can't, nah, that's cool. Peace. I'll give my dollar. I get what you're back in. But um, sometimes you gotta be willing and able to say that again. Because who you really are is not you, but the facade you got that they could deal with. Most of us put on the facade that we need people to deal with. That's right. That's because we don't want to push them too far, too fast. Uh -huh. We don't want to let them see the real us too quickly. Mm -hmm. So we meet them, we, we give them what we think they want. True. Mm -hmm. True. We don't come out like, you know, some of us even articulate real well <laughs> so that people know that we are educated and no. they have real intelligence. And then they be like, wait a minute, this is talk so real. Why do you say I'm dead on them? Because dead on you. You just put on a facade so they think that you're intelligent and smart. So we try to act like something that we ain't. They win. The, the reality is you've got to get real and stay that way. A lot more will be accomplished if you're real and stay that way versus put on a facade and they find out who you are in. That's right. That's true. My wife can tell you, I was very real. When I was in school, I was a man. I knew all the man, I told folks I was a man. I told the ladies I was a man. I was like, I ain't got to have a relationship, I ain't got to have a girlfriend. Because that ain't me. <laughs> but by being real, she's like, that's like, I got something for you. <laughs> Apparently it worked because she did that. I'm like, that's what I'm here to say. But the reality is, if I'm more real and I got caught up in some stuff, uh -huh. she can be like, I thought you said it was just me and you, you just love me to be up there. Like, and that's when folks start. 